What you're about to see is going to melt your brain. All right, here we go. Can I tell you a secret? Your mind is a pendulum swinging between realities. Your identities are not something to be feared. They're something to be welcomed. This is the best, worst day of my life. Welcome back, everyone. This will be my Marvel Moon Knight Episode 6 finale trailer video. There's a whole bunch of stuff that they have to wrap up, a whole bunch of Easter eggs and footage to break down. So if you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. Doctor Strange 2 is also coming out next week. We have the Moon Knight finale and Doctor Strange 2 coming out in the same week. So we're doing a giveaway for IMAX tickets for the movie. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave all your predictions on the video. This is mostly meant to be a Moon Knight video, but obviously some of what's happening ties in with some of what's happening in Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness. Just because we spent most of Episode 5 getting a couple answers about how some of these alternate dimensions are connected with the MCU gods and what's going on in Doctor Strange 2 with them visiting alternate universes with all the different variants. At the end of Episode 5, Mark Spector and Steven, also kind of Jake Lockley technically, were stuck in the Enneads version of the Underworld, the one specific to the Egyptian gods. They call it the Duat. The hippo goddess, Towerwet, explains how the multiverse connected everything. She used the Black Panther ancestral plane example. You'd be surprised how many intersectional planes of untethered consciousness exist. Like the ancestral plane. Oh, just gorgeous. Pretty much when everybody dies, they travel to an alternate dimension, which she called alternate states of consciousness, based on what they believe in. So for example, Black Panther, the Wakandans, when they die, they travel to the ancestral plane because that's part of their belief system and because of his contract with the Panther goddess, Bost. Just like we see in Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness, you can travel between different dimensions. I mean, we've seen it before. Everybody who's read comics knows how that works. It's just that so far, the way they've explained it on Moon Knight, in order to bring someone back from an alternate dimension into the MCU in their physical form, you actually have to have their body. So for example, Odin doesn't have a body anymore in the MCU, so he can't really come back in that same way. Iron Man's body was cremated, so they can't bring MCU Iron Man back in that way either. The way that Mark Spector, the way that Stephen Grant, and technically Jake Lockley too exist right now is that they've been separated from their physical body. So that's kind of like the ancestral plane where you basically separate different aspects of existence from each other. As for the Jake Lockley of it all, I do believe that we did see a version of Jake Lockley just briefly because of the Brooklyn accent or New York accent, however you want to think about it. There was a brief scene at the beginning of episode five where he's talking about how he's fine and they dose him with that sedative. It sounds like during that moment, he briefly slipped into a completely different New York accent, and that was probably a version of Jake Lockley. You're really good. I tell you what, I feel like a million dollars. Never felt so good. I want to see myself out. Thank you, Doctor. There have been several scenes in previous episodes hinting at him, just kind of referencing the character. Like the third sarcophagus, all the taxi cabs in the different episodes, and both Steven and Mark arguing with each other about how they did not wind up killing that group of thugs in the earlier episode. It wasn't me, it wasn't me. That means it was probably Jake Lockley that stabbed all those people. He's the stabby one, turns out. They haven't completely explained when Jake Lockley came into existence and what the inspiration for his character was. Like, we learned why Stephen Grant was created. He was based on one of the characters from their favorite movie, but where did the inspiration for Jake Lockley come from? Because he's sort of like the Travis Bickle aspect of their personality, like the really crazy, really violent personality. It's just not clear if he was also there when they were a child, like he also expressed him as a child, or if it happened later in life when he broke around his mother's death. We'll probably learn a little bit more about that during the finale. It just seems like a big hanging plot thread that they would want to explain before the end of the series, even though there's still a lot of hanging plot threads to resolve. As we also saw at the end of episode five, you see all those purple souls just arcing down into the duat. It means that Amit has been released somehow. Arthur Harrow has found a way to release her, and she's just started judging people en masse, doing her version of Infinity Gauntlet snaps. The reason why you're not seeing crazy amounts of people here, like why the sky isn't just totally purple with a ton of people, because she's kind of insta-judging people, is because the only people that are winding up in this place that she's judging are the ones who actually believe in the Egyptian gods and Amit herself. So she can judge anybody she wants, but when she kills someone, the only people that wind up in this version of the afterlife are the ones who believe the same things that they believe. So if she walked up and judged a bunch of Asgardians, they would wind up in a version of Hell because that's their alternate dimension that represents the underworld for them. Hell spelled H-E-L with one L. 
So right now when you see all that purple energy arcing out of the top of the Great Pyramid, it's coming from that same room that we saw in the previous episode where they had the meeting of the gods. Because of the size of her following, most of the people that she's in the middle of judging right now are just kind of localized to this area around Egypt. But eventually the more people see it, the more people believe in her, the more powerful she becomes because a lot of God's power is relative to the size of their following. So eventually the effect would grow and grow and grow to cover the entire planet and then eventually the entire galaxy, then eventually the entire universe. So for instance, right now, she's not as powerful as the Infinity Stones per se, but she could become that powerful theoretically if enough time went by and enough people believed in her. There's a bunch of footage of Moon Knight and Arthur Harrow both flying at each other with Moon Knight wearing his full costume and then both having full powers like you would expect a version of Infinity War with them all using their powers fighting each other in a traditional superhero movie. That means that Towerwet was probably successful in contacting Layla somehow to be the one to actually free Conchu so that somehow Conchu was able to help Mark Spector and Steven rescue themselves, make it back to the world of the living into their body. And then also when he came back because Conchu's released from his prison, they have their powers again so that the healing factor will take care of the bullet wounds that are still in their body because if you brought them back right now, they would just instantly die again because of the bullet wounds. That's the reason they have to release Conchu before Mark Spector can come back to life. Yes, of course, I totally think that Stephen Grant will come back again eventually. They're trying to do as much of the comics as they can. And the whole idea in the comics is they kind of did this run where they were in the hospital, but it was a way for him to sort of work his mental state out and all the different personalities came to an agreement with each other. Everyone inside his head realized that they needed each other to be a better superhero to survive better. It's like when Stephen Grant and Mark Spector hug each other, like they're happy to see each other, whereas before they were kind of at war with each other. The same thing will eventually be true for Jake Lockley as well. It's just that they're not totally aware of what's going on with him yet. Like all three of them will eventually meet each other and then it'll really get crazy. I know a lot of you are asking why the other gods is part of the Ennead allowing this to happen. Why are they ignoring what Khonshu is telling them? Well, one, they kind of hate Khonshu to begin with, so they don't want to believe him. And most gods are pretty capricious and pretty lazy. The other gods probably could have found out what was really going on if they really wanted to, but that would have required them to expend some effort. Everyone posting their gore was right memes. Just wait for that. Everybody posted that Thanos was right memes after Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame came out. It'll be the same thing for Christian Bale's gore the God Butcher after Thor Love and Thunder. So what'll probably happen during the course of the finale, like when things really get crazy and they start fighting each other, is you'll have Moon Knight trying to stop Arthur Harrow and you'll have some of the other gods like Khonshu trying to stop Amit like Person versus person and gods versus gods. The reason why most of them ignore what the other gods are doing too is to avoid an all out god tier level Avengers Endgame situation because that would basically lead to the end of all reality, which is kind of what we're threatened with during Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness. That's why I think they're waiting to like the very end of the finale episode to sort of tease what's happening with Werewolf by Night in the next places where Moon Knight is going to cross over in the MCU because they've been billing Moon Knight as a sort of self-contained mini series like it's not supposed to get a season two, but Moon Knight himself is supposed to be a big deal in the future Marvel Phase 4, Marvel Phase 5. It's kind of like what they're doing with the WandaVision series. Like there's only one series of WandaVision. They're not going to do WandaVision season two because right after that, she goes into Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness. Scarlet Witch will continue to be a really big character going forward in the MCU in Marvel Phase 5. Same basic deal with all these Midnight Suns characters like Blade, Black Knight, Werewolf by Night, any other characters like Ghost Rider, the Punisher that they eventually introduce in the MCU. The whole thing with the Moon Knight origin is that they retroactively sort of worked in his backstory. He actually started out in the Werewolf by Night comics, but he was already a fully formed character in a slightly different version. So later on, when they gave him an actual backstory, they retconned a couple things. There'll probably be some references to that during the Werewolf by Night special that they have this Halloween. Mahershal Ali's Blade character is supposed to come back during that, and I think they're supposed to tease what's happening with the Blade movie, which is happening next year as well. I think that's when we're meant to see Black Knight Kit Harrington come back with the Ebony Blade, the full armor, have a big Midnight Sun style crossover, and it'll be some other big villain that they all team up to face during that Blade movie. If you spotted any other Easter eggs in the trailer that I didn't talk about in the video, just write them below in the comments. My full Moon Knight finale video will post next Wednesday after they release it. In my non-spoilery Doctor Strange 2 review will post Tuesday morning, so make sure you enable alerts for that so you don't miss that. Some of you also been asking me about doing merch for my channel or how to support the channel. Now YouTube is actually letting you support me by leaving tips on my videos using that special heart underneath each of the actual videos. It's right here. They're supposed to give you guys some special power ups whenever you do that for each of my videos. So when you try that out, let me know if it's working for you. So if you want to support the channel, that's the best way to do it right now. Thank you to all of you for all of your support.
Congratulations, Dylan Randall. You're the giveaway winner for my last big Marvel video. Please email me on the about page of my channel so I can get your contact details. And everyone click here for my new Doctor Strange 2 X-Men Professor X trailer video. And click here for my full Moon Knight Episode 5 video and Easter eggs. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.